everyone, it's Wingspan TT, the fourth best commentator on YouTube, and it is time for Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag Deathmatch. And I had a lot of, um, I've played a lot of good games recently. Now that I'm a little back in my game, I've been playing a lot. I want to get in there, see the new map, see everything. Um, kind of just push myself to catch up because I know I've been out of it for so long um, due to being sick for a little while. So you got to make those videos make or break. And uh, this particular match is really cool because I think you're going to see a lot of interesting plays on my part and on the part of some of the other players. Uh, we've got some pretty interesting players in here. And also I make some really interesting mistakes that I think you can learn from. And one of the first mistakes here that I make is I accidentally choose my wanted ability set instead of my deathmatch ability set. So, you know, I have Smoke Bomb, which um, is not particularly useful in deathmatch too often. Uh, you know, not like it's not useful at all, just saying overall I wouldn't really recommend Smoke Bomb all the time. Um, and of course Pistol, which while I like Pistol a lot in Wanted and some other modes, it really does not serve too much of a purpose in Deathmatch. Uh, the maps are just too small, you might as well use Poison Dart. And unlike, you know, because like in Wanted, you know, you could be chasing people all over the whole match. All over the whole map. And here, I, it's very obvious this guy's my Pursuer. Um, so I'm trying to lure him into Hay Bale Stun, which I immediately get. We talked about those last time. When you enter a Hay Bale while you're in the animation of entering it, you are completely vulnerable. Um, so, you know, someone could have stunned you immediately. Now here, I could have gotten a good kill on my target. Unfortunately, I kind of ran into a tripwire bomb. It was just sitting there on the ground. He threw it to the ground. Won't be part of your system. And here, I see my... Um, my next target also is being stolen from me. And I think one thing with deathmatch is you want to be stealthy, but you also you need to keep in mind how many pursuers your target has because you cannot get, you know, poached over and over and over again. You gotta you gotta look. If it looks like there's multiple people coming after you, uh, you've gotta move it or lose it. And here it's I again, once again, it's pretty obvious this guy's my pursuer. He's coming right at me, not like completely right at me, but I'm gonna throw down my time phase, wait a second so that he loses his lock, and then just move in for the free stun. I think people misunderstand time phase, like, you don't lose your lock immediately, you lose it after a very short period of time. And here I see Vincent Joe has another pursuer, so I'm going to come up here um, to hopefully shortcut his other pursuer, and also to kind of just make it so I cannot be contested. I take the lead now, but now immediately going back down to second place, 850 points. Now I don't immediately see where my target is, it's like I'm playing peekaboo, um, except instead of like a 5 year old, I got Lu Lee VT Villa Nueva. Um, I don't know what the hell that stands for. I'm assuming once again that the uh, this guy's my pursuer, but I'm not actually 100% sure. I'm like 90% sure. So I'm gonna come over here. He's and he's smart about. It. He's not coming immediately at me. I drop my smoke bomb, hoping to catch him in it. And I have actually crafted my smoke bomb for double range, which part of the reason I've crafted that way is because I assume that good players memorize the range of smoke bomb. So therefore, by going with double range, I hope to to catch them off guard where they go to skirt just the outer range of smoke bomb and they get caught because they didn't realize oh it's wingspan guys going for the 3.5 meter smoke bomb well didn't work this guy was still outside that range now here once again now at this point i don't really know who my pursuer is i mistakenly believe it's the huntsman but it is pretty obvious right away that it's not true because the whispers are still coming the hits keep coming i decided to immediately go for the kill i dropped time phase by the way um in the hopes that Whoever my pursuer is uh, will be kind of caught off guard by it. This guy's my pursuer, and I just decide I'm just going to run from him. Just decide I'm just going to run for it. Um, and I don't know why. I guess there's something about this player, too. I feel like people who play as the cowboy character, I believe he's actually called the Wanderer. I don't know what the hell he's called. But I feel like people who play as him are generally very good at this game. And I'm sure that's just a huge personal bias that's not even true. But in my own experience, I just find the people who play as him are just really good. So I immediately, whenever I see him, I just get afraid. It's like the same thing like if someone's playing as the physician and they have the prestige mask character or people playing as the jester with the prestige outfit. I always find that those players are good. So whenever I see them, I immediately like panic. And sometimes it's unwarranted. Like just I'm just overreacting. These people are not actually the good. And here I, I kind of messed up. I really should have gone through the chase breaker. Um, but I decide I'm going to go for the hidden kill here, go for 300 points. I just move into that blend group real quickly, and here getting completely killed by Villa Nueva. And Zorboid Orb, joining the game Zorboid Orb, as we see legendary rank player, top 13. He's on Twitter, uh, he's always got some interesting opinions about the game and its balance. I was having a really long uh, Twitter conversation with him the other day about the merits and dismerits of Determined and some other things in the match. He is a great player, so I, I greatly respect his opinion, even when we agree to disagree. 
Now, because I have my disguise in here, I felt uh, a little more confident to move into the group, wait for the hidden, wait for the 450 points, and wait for the half focus. And they managed to all pay off. I'm now 2350 with 5 minutes and 13 mi seconds on the clock. And here, this physician, I'm pretty sure, is one of my pursuers. He's just moving in a range. I can hear the whispers. At the same time, he's moving in a range. This, this guy could also be my pursuer. I'm getting nervous. I dropped a time phase, but he also drops a time phase. But he manages to kill a civilian. I get the stun on him. And see, he had the survivalist perk, which is the one where you turn invisible when you kill a civilian or get stunned, which immediately tells me he's not actually good. Um, <laughs> he's because no one actually takes that. And we see here the physician. Um, I, I locked the wrong character, and I meant to I meant to disrupt the physician so I could hopefully get a stun on him if he didn't already lock me. But I fucked up Zorboid Orb here, getting a very nice kill on me as I went in at, to get a panic kill on my target. Here I'm going to move in a blend group. And you just immediately go for it because I just assume Andy Expert Gamer wouldn't have assumed that the guy who just spawned from him was one of his pursuers. Plus, he had four pursuers. So I'm battling three people to try to get his him in the kill. I immediately move over the hay bale to try to lure my pursuer into hay bale stun. Um, and again, this is just something I've just been doing more and more recently. And immediately get the hay bale stun. People do not understand that this is how it works. If your target's on the other side of a hay bale, you cannot jump in the hay bale. If you could trick them into ruin, jumping into it, or you want to drop firecrackers or time face to kind of mess with them, that's fine. And here, I wasn't sure who Dark, Fo Dark Foxing was. He gives himself away with the pistol. Um, and then I'm going to move in here with Disruption. He has two other pursuers and moving relatively quickly. I have the full perfect approach and I just come in to get it. I assume that because he used a pistol, he probably didn't see me because he's locked into that animation. But someone else saw me and I'm just going to go die in these leaves. Assassinator DX25 kill me for 1100 points. Not fucking bad. I had no clue where he was. I think he was in that same uh, blend group there with my target. And we see Zorboid or uh, catching up very quickly. And now already in third place, even though he joined the match, I believe, like two and a half minutes into it. Um, but he gets shot. So that guy, wait, that guy had used two pistols in like one minute? Uh, maybe he had it on, um, he had the quick recovery or something like that, because normally that's just not physically possible. Uh, three minutes left on the clock, ladies and gentlemen, and I maintain the lead. I think a lot of people who are new to this game, and I remember when ACB came out, a lot of people said this game is bullshit because the better you're doing, the harder it gets, you get more and more people after you. But I think what people don't realize is that when you are in first place, you have the most control over the game. Like, you control where people go because people are all chasing after you. Zorboid Orb here getting the stun. I'm going to slowly move after him. I am, he's good enough. He definitely knows I'm his pursuer, so I'm just going to stand here. I was about to throw time phase at him, but he decides to try to knife me. And I just move away for a second right when he goes in uh, to get the stun. And I think he, he realized that he wasn't going to get the easy stun on me. So he backed off for a very, very quick second. And right in that moment of hesitation, that's where I moved in. And got my 900 point kill on him. And Villa Nueva coming in for 700 points. I did notice at the last second that he was my pursuer, but I got a bad lock. I was not able to contest. I probably shouldn't have even locked at all. I should have probably just ran away, forced him to give up his hidden, um, and then contested the kill. So I would have got 100 points and he would get fewer points. Um, but I just kind of generally just fucked up. I just messed up. So here, Assassinator. I didn't even see where he is. I guess he's in this group. I feel like it's this guy, but I'm actually not really sure. And we got fucking someone moonwalking over here. Uh, but because, again, once again, because I'm in costume, I decided to go away. I assume Zorboid Orb is my pursuer. So I'm going to throw a disruption on him and then go around for the stun. Um, but I kind of mess up because if you throw a disruption on someone, they don't actually, they do not lose their lock on you. So what you can do is you can throw a disruption on them. You can run around the tent or something. You can wait till you lose your lock or you can count to three, uh, three seconds of the clock or make it so that you can still see them, but they can't see you. And then, and only then when you know that they've lost a lock on you and you still have like five or so seconds left on your disruption, then you can move in and get your stun on them because they're not going to be able to relock you. And they're going to, they're not going to want to just run around randomly um, and just slamming X on everything. So disruption can be used uh, to break a lock and to get a uh, to get a kill on people or stun on people, but you got to be smart about it. You can, you do not auto lose lock. And there I could have got a slightly better kill if I had jumped up on those boxes. Could have gotten acro, but it was a little risky. I saw that they were in the middle of an animation, decided to go for it. This guy, I was specifically waiting for my disruption to come back, but I knew that he's my pursuer. The huntsman's my pursuer. This guy's not my pursuer. Um, and here I was gonna go around and like find the Wanderer and get a stun on him, but then I forgot, oh, he's right there. Um, and there was definitely a, like, a whole 
three quarters of a second of hesitation there, so I could have gotten a stun on him. But I was just like, I dropped the ball, I dropped the disruption, I dropped my brains, I left them at the post office when I was mailing my passport in for renewal. Apparently, I just didn't know what was going on. And watch this. This guy's my target. I decided to not do anything whatsoever. Get in this blend group, walk away from him, get in. Um, and then I noticed that the Huntsman was also moving in on him, so I dropped the time phase, because I probably could have gotten the kill regardless of it regardless of using time phase but because i knew i was facing someone else that someone else was going to come in and poach my kill i'm like i'm going to drop time phase make it hard for everyone else and then go in and get that kill get that money get those points get those points ladies and gentlemen send me 100 points uh 10 kills eight deaths i really wish it would show stuns by the way in the score in the scoreboard like i understand in acb uh, the developers didn't realize the stuns would be so important to the game score. But come on, guys. It's been like four games now. Um, you should add stuns to the scoreboard. I don't think it's that much to ask. And uh, the other reason I want to sh uh, share this match is because it was just a generally good match for me. Uh, it was a really cool example of a lot of different general tactics. Uh, for whatever reason, my challenges got reset. But it's also because I reached Prestige 10. Prestige 10. And the angels sing. And the band plays. And everyone wins, especially me. Well, everyone, I'm Wingspan TT from TopTierTactics.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll like it. I hope you'll share it with your friends, share it with your enemies, get it out there, and come back and watch the next video. And until you do that, cheers.